So, the next possible uh, form of hedging that you might come across is a currency future. Now, we've seen futures last week. We did interest rate futures. And to be honest, currency rate futures are broadly the same thing. They're just applied to foreign exchange rather than interest rates. If you want the kind of technical stuff, um, futures are, again, like we saw, standardised versions of forward contracts. So they still allow you to fix the exchange rate of a future transaction, just like your your future, sorry your forwards do. <clears throat> but they are um, for standard amounts, and they are tradable. Okay, so it means they're a little bit more flexible in case the underlying transaction falls through. But in principle, they work in a very very similar way to interest rate futures that we've seen. Now remember, because they are for standard amounts, <clears throat> they do um, tend to be well perhaps a little bit more awkward when it comes to covering our transaction. So it may well be that we don't perfectly hedge our transaction here, um, but you stand a really good chance of getting at least close to a good hedge. Now, it's just worth mentioning that in the exam, currency futures are going to be denominated in sterling. So your futures will cover you typically for £50,000 worth of transaction each. Um, in the exam, sorry, in the, in the text rather, and the question bank, there may be a few questions you'll come across where the futures are denominated in the foreign currency. So a future may well perhaps relate to $50,000 or something like that. Um, that's not something you'll see in, in your exam. So if you spot that happening, um, just move on to a different question. It's not particularly common, uh, but you might just see it. Now, if you remember, <clears throat> one of the key things to do with futures was that we had to set the future up. So you kind of got to get everything prepared before you actually go ahead with the, the future transaction itself. Okay, so there are a few things you need to be aware of if you're setting up your futures. First of all, you've got to decide if you're buying or selling the, the, the currency futures. Now remember, we just said that the contracts, futures contracts in the exam will always be denominated in sterling. So just as we saw with other futures, the future has to go in the same direction as the underlying transaction. So because the contract's in sterling, you have to decide what you're doing with sterling and the underlying transaction, and then do the same with the future. So for example, if you're going to buy a foreign currency in the future, <clears throat> so let's say for example we've got a future payment in dollars for example, we're going to be selling sterling to the bank, so we sell sterling futures. If, on the other hand, we had a future receipt in a foreign currency, well, we're going to have to sell that foreign currency when we get it to the bank. So the, the bank essentially is going to be selling us sterling. We're going to be buying sterling. So we buy sterling futures. Now, it's important that you do this from our point of view. I know a lot of stuff is actually quoted from the bank's point of view, but because we are the ones that are actually doing the, 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 the futures transaction ourselves, you have to look at this from our point of view. So what are we doing in the underlying transaction with sterling? Okay. If you get stuck, you, you aren't going to need to explain that chain of logic. So if you want to, you can just remember if we're going to make a future payment, you sell sterling futures now. And if you've got a future receipt, you buy sterling futures now for your hedge. The next thing we're going to have to do is figure out how many contracts we actually need, just like we did with um, interest rate futures. Now, to do this, we're going to take the size of the transaction that we're trying to hedge, and we're going to divide it by the size of the contract, the futures contract itself. Now, there is a problem with this, which is that the contract is going to be in sterling. Remember we said that the, the contract size is always in sterling, but the transaction that you're trying to hedge will be in a foreign currency. So you can't hedge for exit, you can't work out the number of contracts by taking $10,000 and dividing it by £500, for example. It doesn't make any sense. So you have to convert the transaction that you are trying to hedge into sterling. And the rate we do that at is the rate basically based on the futures price. So whatever the future that you're hedging with is currently trading at, whatever its value is, that's the exchange rate that we use to convert the future transaction into sterling to figure out the number of contracts. Okay. The reason for this is, in theory, it's what that transaction is going to be fixed at, is the futures price. Again, that should make a little bit more sense when we see it with some numbers in and some examples, but just bear that in mind for the moment. You've got to do a little bit of work um, to find out the number of contracts. Once you've set everything up, 
then the actual hedge is actually surprisingly similar to the other futures that you've seen. So the interest rate futures, for example. The main difference is that the profit or loss on the future, again, will be in the wrong currency. So it has to be translated into sterling at the exchange rate on the date of the future transaction. Okay, Because remember, the actual kind of buying and selling, the making of the game, if you like, is going to be on the same date as the future transaction that we're trying to hedge. Okay, So basically, when you do the buying or selling the futures, make the game and the loss, that date um, is the date that you need to convert your profit or loss into sterling. Now, again, I realise all of this may seem very, very um, <clears throat> difficult to fit in your heads at the moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at an example together and make sure you see how this all slots together. Okay, And the example that we're going to use for this is example um, five from your class notes. OK, so let's have a look at example five. <clears throat> it's currently May. <clears throat> Sorry, uh, Jerry PLC is going to need to pay $500,000 in September. The current spot rate is $1.47 to the pound, $1.47 to the pound. September currency futures are currently quoted at $1.40 to the pound. The minimum contract size is £50,000. By September, the spot rate has moved to $1.32 to the pound and futures are quoted at this rate. <clears throat> Construct a hedge using currency futures for the company and show the outcome. So, just in a, in a nutshell, um, we're going to pay $500,000 then in September. So that's in, in six months' time. The current spot rate is 147. The futures linked to September are quoted at $1.40 to the pound. Minimum contract size is 50000 and the spot rate that we actually get in September, so the exchange rate when we come round to September, turns out to be $1.32 to the pound. Okay. Now, essentially, what we're going to be trying to do here <clears throat> is fix the exchange rate using the futures. Okay, And the September futures are quoted at one forty. So we're going to be trying to aim for that particular transaction, if you like, for that exchange rate for one forty. That's what we're going to try and fix at. Um, Remember, due to basis risk, the exchange rate and the futures rates may not match. So again, you may not ever get a precise hedge. This is often the case with um, with futures down to market imperfections, but that's absolutely fine. Okay, As long as you're close, the chances are you're about right with your answer. So the first thing we need to do, remember, what we were talking about before, is we need to set the future up. So first of all, we need to decide if we need to sell or buy the sterling futures now. OK, so to start the hedge off, well, remember, you have to think about what you're doing with sterling. OK, what are you doing with sterling in the underlying transaction? Now, we need to pay $500,000 in the future. So we're going to be buying those dollars from the bank. So essentially, we're going to be selling them sterling. Okay, We're going to sell sterling to the bank and exchange it for the dollars we need. So if the underlying transaction involves selling sterling then we have to sell our sterling futures today to start the hedge off. The second thing that we need to work out is the number of contracts. <clears throat> now remember, the problem you've got is we want to take the size of the, the transaction that we're trying to hedge, so $500,000, and we need to divide it by the, the size of a contract, which is unfortunately for each future, the minimum contract size is £50,000. <clears> Now, we mentioned before, you can't divide dollars by sterling. So we've got to convert the transaction, the $500,000, into sterling, and we use the futures price. So whatever the futures for September are quoted at, so 140 in this case, that's the exchange rate we're looking at here. Take your $500,000, <clears> convert it into sterling using that 140, the futures rate, and then divide that answer by 50000 now, you'll notice here that that gives us 7.14 contracts. Now, that's a bit of a problem because you can't have points of a contract. <clears throat> so what you need to do is just round it to the nearest whole number. So for our purposes, we'll just say that that means we need to take out seven contracts. So again, it won't be an exact hedge, but it'll be close enough. So I need to sell sterling futures now, and the number of contracts will be seven. Now, once you've got that set up, you pretty much know everything. So, <clears throat> what we would then do is complete the transaction, complete the calculation. 
So in September, what we're going to do is go ahead and remember the underlying transaction just goes ahead as if you've not done any hedging. So we need to pay $500,000 in September. That is going to get converted at whatever the exchange rate in September happens to be. So if the exchange rate in September, according to the question, is $1.32 to the pound, then that $500,000 is going to cost us $378,788. Okay, <clears throat> so that just goes ahead as normal. What we then have is our exchange rate future. Okay, so we've got the future transaction itself. And remember, what we do is we always tend to look at one future at a time. Now, we decided we were going to start our hedge off by selling sterling futures today at whatever the appropriate price is. And we know the September futures are quoted at 140. So just pretend that's its price, if you like. This is the easiest way of dealing with it. So I'm going to sell that today at 140. Now, in theory, the value of the future will change in line with the exchange rate, okay? because it's pegged to that value, just like we saw with interest rates and things like that. So if the September exchange rate is $1.32, when we get to September, then in theory, unless we're told otherwise, that is what the value of the futures will have shifted to. Okay, so when we buy them back to close the hedge out, we'll be buying them back for 132, the new exchange rate. Which means if we sold it for slightly more than we bought it back for, then we have made a gain of <clears throat> sorry, 8 cents. Now, you need to convert that back into a total sterling gain, okay? And unfortunately, what that represents is us having made an eight cent per pound hedged gain, okay? So for every pound that we have hedged, um, we have made an eight cent gain. So to convert that back into sterling, we've got to multiply that up by seven, which is the number of contracts that we took out, multiply by £50,000 per contract. So that gives you the total number of pounds that we've actually um, hedged, if you like. So seven times 50,000. And then you need to divide by the exchange rate in September. So we convert that back into sterling in September at the same date as the underlying transaction. So you're going to use the same exchange rate here as you did when you converted at the spot rate um, just above. So we're going to use the 132 to convert it into sterling. <clears throat> so we've actually made a gain of £21,212. So that's going to get kind of knocked off the payment that we made, the net payment that we made, which gives us £357,576 as kind of our net payment. Now, if you work out what effective rate that's given us, we had a £500,000 payment in September, and the cost of us paying that was £357,576. <clears throat> so that's given us, near as damn it, $1.40, which is the futures price that we were after. So remember, we were trying to fix it at that one forty in the first place. Again, you may not be precise due to basis risk and problems with not quite covering your... Um, your transaction with the number of contracts that you've got. You know, we should have had 7.14, but we've only gone for seven. So <clears throat> there are going to be a couple of little flexible areas that mean you won't get a perfect hedge most of the time, but it will get you almost there. Okay, so again, because this is quite an important area, um, I thought it would be a good one for you to have a go at. <clears throat> so again, I've built in a bit of question practice here for you to, to have a, a crack at. So what I'd like you to go to your textbook, and have a look at self-test question five. And we're looking specifically at 5.1 part C. Okay, it's on page 535 and it's called Kellaway. Okay, so you should be able to find that one on page 535. And what I'd like you to do is just have a read through the scenario first of all. Okay, there's a lot of stuff in here that is irrelevant to this particular question. So don't worry, you're not gonna have to use all of it. Um, but just have a read down to the end of kind of question 5.1 part C. Um, and then press play and we'll have a little chat through. Okay, now this is similar to one of the um, kind of questions we looked at earlier, where in actual fact on the same day you've got multiple transactions. So you should notice for Callaway that we've got a four and a half million dollar receipt 
And then on the same day, we've got a $1.1 million payment. So what you're actually trying to hedge in September is a net 3.4 million receipt. So just after that net figure that you're going to hedge using futures. So bearing that in mind and being very, very careful with your exchange rates, because this is quite a fiddly little question, what I'd like you to do is see if you can use our example five as a framework. That's absolutely fine. But see if you can figure out the answer for Callaway. OK, so a bit of practice for you. This is about as bad as these get. So really, really good practice. Have a go. Press play when you're done and we will talk through it. OK, so as always, what we're going to try and do is set the future up. And there were those two things we had to do to set it up. First of all, we've got to decide if we're buying or selling the futures to start the hedge off. Now, we know that we have a net $3.4 million receipt. So what are we doing with sterling in this transaction? Well, we're going to be selling those dollars to the bank and using it to buy sterling. So to start things off, we need to buy sterling futures today okay, to begin our hedge. And we're also going to need to use September futures because ultimately what we've got here is a transaction in September. So just bear in mind, um, we've got three different figures for futures here. And the one we're particularly interested in is the September one, because that's like I say, that's what we're keen on. That's when the date of the transaction is actually going ahead. So ignore the other two. Just focus on the one that's the same period as links to your transaction. Um, final thing just to keep an eye out for is the number of contracts. So we've got the futures price of one. 0.545. Okay, that's what we're going to be trying to fix out. That's what we're using. So the number of contracts is going to be the 3.4 million pounds receipt, sorry, dollar receipt rather, converted it into sterling using the September futures figure. Okay, so remember you convert it using the futures value that you're given, which in this case is 1.545 divided by the standard contract size. And it told you in this scenario that the contract size was actually £62,500. OK, so we've got pounds on the top, pounds on the bottom, and it gives us overall, in this case, 35.2 contracts, or 35, because remember, you can't have points of a contract. Once you've done your setup, then you can complete the calculation. So we go ahead and convert at the spot rate in September. So just pretend that we haven't done any hedging at all. We receive $3.4 million and we need to convert that back into sterling. Now, unfortunately, within the question, of course, they've given you a spread. So they've given you kind of the buying and the selling rates um, on that date in September. So you just need to be careful that you get the right one. This kind of goes back to what we were talking about before. Remember, we're going to be selling those dollars to the bank. The bank buys high. OK, so the bank is going to buy at the higher of the two rates in the spread on the 23rd of September. OK, it's going to buy at the high figure. So we're going to be using 1.556 as our exchange rate. So that would give us this, this value of 2,185,090. Remember, if you'd use the lower figure, the bank would be giving us more cash. It'd be giving us more sterling and banks would never do that if they can get away with it. So that just goes ahead as a normal transaction. The actual exchange rate future is then a separate transaction. OK, so we'd already decided that we would have bought today at the September futures price. So we, when we set the future up, we were going to buy today at that one point five four five. OK, and we decided we had to buy because we needed to buy sterling futures. We're then going to sell them back on the 23rd of September at whatever the futures are worth on that date. And it actually tells you in the scenario that the futures on that date are going to be worth one point five four nine. OK, one dollar fifty four point nine. OK, so it doesn't exactly match the exchange rate. So there's a bit of basis risk in there. It's not the one point five five six like it probably should be. Um, but that's what it happens to be trading at due to market imperfections. So we've bought something and then we've sold it back for a slightly higher figure. And that gives us a mighty gain of 0.004. 
Okay, so basically 0.4 cents per pound hedged. So to convert that into sterling, we're going to multiply by 35 and then multiply by 62,500. So we're multiplying it by the number of contracts and then the contract size. Okay, that will give you your total gain in sterling. Sorry, yeah, so that will give us our total gain in dollars, rather. My apologies. Okay, we need to convert that back into sterling. Because we've made a gain, and that gain is in dollars, because it's four cents per pound um, hedged, the gain is actually quoted in dollars. So when we convert it back, we're going to have to think what we're doing. So again, we are selling that gain to the bank. We've got a load of dollars that are a gain. We sell them to the bank. The bank will buy the dollars off us, and it buys high on the 23rd of September when this gain happens. So we'll actually be using the 1.556 again here. If by any chance it had been a loss, then that would mean we'd need to have bought dollars in order to kind of meet that loss, to pay that loss off, if you like. And therefore, we would have actually ended up using the other figure. We'd have used the lower one um, because the bank would have actually been selling us the dollars and therefore would have sold low. Okay, so just be a little bit careful. If they quote that spread at the end, you just need to be careful about which exchange rate you're going to use. So our gain in this case, when we work it back through, comes to £5,623. Okay, so our total transaction value, we're receiving £2,190,713. So again, if you work out your effective rate here, um, you're looking at an effective exchange rate that we've achieved of 1.552. Now, again, remember, we were trying to fix it using the September futures at 1.545. So we're not quite there. But as we talked about, as we went through, um, it's basis risk. So, again, the futures are not at the same price as the exchange rates in September. There are some market imperfections here and we don't have an exact covering with the contracts. Remember, we should have had 35.2 contracts and we've only had 35. So again, there's a bit of flexibility in the outcome, but you're nearly where you set yourself the target of being.